community on the Common Core state standards. Um, why parents, for you know, I would consider legitimate reasons, are um, not supporting the Common Core standards and their schools and implementing them and their children and taking the um, the assessment and um, my same issues. My biggest three issues are, well, educating the community, but one and two is providing solid resources for teachers and just there's, in general, a lack of good resources out there. Um, that's just the truth right now. It, there is. I, I looked. New textbooks, new series online, um, from state to state, whatever, you name it. And the other is training, training our teachers. But besides all of that, I was really, really frustrated after watching some videos um, on YouTube, and I took out my phone, and I just was not having a good day, and I wasn't wearing my math lab shirt, and so I just, like, set everything into my phone. So I'm just going to play that for you, and then just talk for a minute. So, pardon the rant, but um, I'm very passionate, so what can I say? I mean, take it or leave it. Here's the thing. You want to talk about dumbing down the schools in America? You want to talk about a one-size-fits-all education? Well, if you don't teach conceptually using models, and you don't have students defending their reasoning, critiquing the reasoning of others, if you just have them sitting in a chair, bowing down to their masterful teacher, telling them the steps, spoon-feeding them how to do every little thing instead of thinking outside the box, thinking on their own, and coming up with algorithms and discovering them and exploring them, then you, my friend have a one-size-fits-all education. Then you, my friend, have created a robot that is only good for, in my opinion, yes, I can do the steps. Yes, I can follow your directions. Yes, I will bow down. Yes, I will do what you told me to do. As opposed to someone that is working collaboratively with someone, thinking outside the box, creating, investigating, critiquing the reasoning, justifying theirs, using visual conceptual ideas, thinking outside the box, challenging others, having discourse in the math classroom and math talks. This is not dummying down America, but challenging to be the leaders of our future, our next generation, not to be the ones that are more like a robot. You know, I go on and on and on. I don't think you want to like listen to the entire rant, but essentially, um, you know, the, the resistance is, oh, these standards are dummying down because, you know, they have to draw a picture and my students just and my kids and whatever, they just memorize the algorithm. Well, algorithms have their place. They are, you know, important in mathematics, but there's a different approach to teaching mathematics that works, that has been proven, um, that is based on brain research. And, and that is when kids can pattern seek when they can discover. They can actually discover an algorithm if the teacher plans a lesson that is developmentally appropriate in which they are scaffolded into seeing the pattern. It's so obvious to them because maybe the numbers they chose or maybe the visual models they had the students working on. And, and so then they can get to that algorithm and then use it because then they're going to understand it. See, that's the idea. But we don't take the time to educate parents because, you know, we're math teachers and we're busy, we're teaching math. We don't have time to explain to parents that this is good for their children. Now, I will say that there are been, there's been some models that haven't been the greatest for kids. I've seen some teachers even using some. And again, that goes back to a lack of teacher training. Common Core standards are new. Districts don't have a lot of money. They haven't really trained the teachers into really teaching um, the Common Core way. Now, the Common Core way <laughs> really has been, you know, implemented in school districts for years. And some, um, having kids do all of, all of these wonderful things, discover and understanding the concept and use reasoning, critical thinking, higher order, compare, contrast, justify, right? Um, and so it's not anything new. It's not this crazy math that somebody, you know, wants to dummy down America and create a workforce. Just newsflash about that whole workforce thing. People are like, ooh, I read about how, you know, the Common Core's goal is this and that and how it's related to the workforce. Oh, they must want just to create like robots. And uh, no, any job, whether it be a CEO, a teacher, a doctor, a lawyer, what have you, we are all contributing 
to the economic stimulus of our nation. So we are all part of the workforce. I'm part of the workforce. So don't let that word scare you, okay? Um, I know that's one of the goals. Um, teachers being facilitators of knowledge. There's nothing wrong with me facilitating because I know that my job is to inspire and to motivate and facilitate. And, and part of that is being an educator. I don't have a problem with the word facilitate and no one should be afraid of that word. There are people talking about how, oh, we're devaluing teachers now because we're not even calling them teachers in the Common Core State Standards. We're calling them facilitators. Oh, this is devaluing. I mean, come on. I'm going to be the first one to say that I would rather lead my kids to the water and, and, and show them how to get there and go through that process and that discovery and that exploration and facilitate that learning as opposed to stand and deliver. Here are the steps, you do like me, I do, you do, we do, follow me. I am your leader, you are the followers, I mean, come on. So I kind of made this up to just show the contrast between um, what I feel is the great contrast between challenging the thinkers and the innovators of the next generation and dumbing down what I feel is a one size fits all. You know, here's the other thing about how you know, this gets me because this is how illogical some people are. They're like, you know what? The Common Core standards are one size fits all because you want all of the states and all of the nation to be teaching the same thing in math. That's just a one size fits all. Um, really? So commonality is bad? Because last time I checked, an entire state had the exact same standards. What's the difference? California is a large state. They all have the exact same standards prior to Common Core that were tested in the CST. Was that a one size fits all for all of the different cities and counties that made up the great state of California or Texas or any other state for that matter? Was that a one size fits all because different communities didn't have different standards? They all were on the same page with this commonality. I mean, do you see where the logic fails? Commonality is good. I can work with a teacher in another state and get more resources and share my ideas and watch her videos and see how she introduces a lesson to her students on a topic that I might teach. We are strengthening our, our network of not only teachers but also resources. And this is good for kids. Uh, just give me one good reason why having common standards is bad for mathematics. Okay? There's no like, you know, oh, mathematics, you shouldn't have standards for the whole nation because, you know, that's just. I don't want everyone to be teaching the same thing and learn, the kids learning the same thing, you know, because, well, there might be some topics that, you know, certain states should choose to, you know, decide that they should teach and others that they shouldn't really. Like what? Because, you know, what is it like? Oh, fractions, you know, we shouldn't really. Uh, scary. No. Mathematics, universal language. It's okay if we all teach the same thing as long as someone's thoughtfully planned, which they did, the standards K through 12 to make our students ready, every single one of our students in our great nation for college so that somebody in Massachusetts or in Michigan isn't more prepared from somebody in California or another state, for example, okay? Now, we all have the same expectations for our nation. That is a good thing. So commonality is good. And you can't use the logic that it's a one-size-fits-all because it fails when you look at the state having common standards as a whole. So I rest my case there. But see, that's the logical thinking that we need as a habit of mind so that kids can do that. That's what the mathematical practices are about, using logic and reasoning and seeing how others reason, other uh, reasonings fail and critiquing the reasoning of others and justifying our own and using examples and counterexamples. Those are all embedded in the mathematical practices, which are part of the Common Core State Standards. Those are good for kids. Don't you want them to be those types of thinkers? Think about it. Or not. Or just kind of jump on the bandwagon of negativity and, you know, you have one problem and there are legitimate concerns. So let's just, you know, hate the standards too. No. Do your research. So I kind of made this contrast here. And really, we were created. See, this whole idea of challenging the thinkers and the innovators and, and using the mathematical practices to teach math conceptually, it, it really rests on the premise that we were created, in my opinion, with an innate ability to pattern seek and to reason. It's in all of us. It really is. And that's why kids love puzzles. They love figuring things out. That's an enjoyable experience because we love to look for patterns. And we do it all the time. We do it when we're watching the news. We compare and we contrast every day. It's something that's part of us. And that's how mathematics even started was by great thinkers who were looking for patterns. 
and discovering algorithms. Let our students experience that. That is an awesome, joyous thing to actually go, oh my gosh, I see a pattern. I figured it out. Don't we want our students to be engaged in those types of activities? Do we want them to reason, to collaborate, to discover, to use multiple methods, to have an emphasis on process, reasoning, critical thinking, higher order thinking skills, logic, defending, justifying, compare, critique, conjecture, hypothesize. Is that what we want? That sounds really good to me. And those are what the skills are that are embedded in the mathematical practices. As opposed to a practice that stems from the idea that teachers possess all the knowledge, so therefore we can stand and deliver, right? And be the beholders of all knowledge. And it is teacher-centered. Steps and procedural is the emphasis. Not that steps don't have their place, but students need to discover and explore before you tell them the steps or the procedure or the algorithm. They can actually discover that or a piece of that on their own and have a conceptual understanding as to why the algorithm works. If they don't know why the algorithm works and they haven't discovered it and had an experience with it, you shouldn't be using it, period. Otherwise, you're just memorizing. And that's not good for kids. Um, this dummying down one size fits all really focuses on one way, low depth of knowledge, direct instruction, and, and just mainly having a model in which the students are not really being valued for the knowledge and that they possess that is part of their innate being. And we're robbing kids of the experience if we think they're only capable of this. Do you know how many kids hate mathematics? Why? Oh, they think I'm just, I don't have a math brain. I'm just not good with numbers. No, that's really not the case. Everyone can have a mathematical mind if we teach in a way that's conceptual and they understand it. They shut down when they don't get it. Then they just think, well, I don't get any of this. This x squared times y squared plus x, y, z. I, and it's all foreign to them. Do we want to move kids from the concrete? Whoops, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me just, I got a little excited there. From the concrete to the abstract? Or do we just want to give them the abstract? And so, um, what, what do you think? Would you rather have kids, you know, measuring um, the circumference and diameter of a circle and analyzing the pattern and discovering uh, the relationship of pi or just memorize the formula pi equals c over d circumference divided by diameter and you have no idea why that works or where that formula even came from do you want them to measure vertical angles and discover that they are congruent or just tell them vertical angles are congruent you memorize it do you want them to understand a concept and make sense of it or just maybe extract words in a story problem and um, just try that because they all mean the same thing when you see them in a story problem you need to understand actually what's going on or use reasoning do you, do you want students to focus on place value and meaning or just memorize how to add and subtract with rules? What do you think? Do you want students to understand the relationship between division of fractions and discover it using visual models? They can leave the visual models once they discover it and then use the algorithm. Or do you want them to just like, you know, keep switch flip and, you know, flip the numerator and denominator. They have no idea what a reciprocal is, but it sounds good because the teacher said it and it's part of our steps. One, two, three. We don't know why, but let's just do it. We'll forget that. Do you want to present kids to discover the integer rules, maybe using chip models, number lines, having an experience with zero pairs, negatives, and positives, or just tell them the rules. Negative times negatives, positive, negative times positive, and negatives. Don't ask why. Just, just do it. Do you want kids to move from the visual to the concrete to the abstract, or just give them the abstract? Because again, they just need to know the algorithms. They just need to memorize them. They don't need to know why or what's going on. They don't need to discover anything. They don't need to explore. They can't think on their own. They can't analyze and look for a pattern. They can't defend their reasoning. What do you want? Let's change the way mathematics instruction is in our nation. Let's try something that's good for kids, that's based on brain research of how the mind acquires new information and knowledge, specifically mathematical knowledge. Let's use those studies about brain research, about exploration, discovery, and understanding a conceptual model for an idea. And, and not just dismiss it because, you know what, we're scared, we have a red flag, we're afraid about data mining and tracking and the test and how hard it is. So we're just going to hate the standards. Do your research, America. The mathematical practices and the Common Core State Standards are good. They are rigorous. They are going to create the innovators, the thinkers of the next generation. And so do your research. That's all I ask. Bye. This is all in love. Honestly, this is my purpose. My purpose.
I'm here to impact, to inspire,